Hi, welcome to another Capra Convo. It's so good to be with you, Denise, and with our listening audience today. Was that sincere? Yeah, I believe it was. Got another good question for you. Will you stand? Well, we're at times, Denise, like we've never seen before, and people are being challenged whether they're going to stand or whether they're going to cower down and run. And, and I, I wanted to look at Ephesians 6, if you okay. wouldn't mind. I'm going to look at it in the New Living, or no, the Passion Translation. That'd probably be very good. But I want to look at it in 613. It talks about the armor of God, and it talks about what our armor is, the sword of the Spirit. Uh, we talk about the Word of God. We've got to have the Word of God, our sword, with us all the time. But when after you've put all that on, you want to read that in sure. that version? Yeah. Because of this, you must wear all the armor that God provides so you're protected as you confront the slanderer. For you're destined for all things and will rise victorious. Put on truth as the belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Put on holiness truth, as the protective armor that covers your heart. Stand on your feet alert, and then you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace. You know, the other verse talks about a shield of faith. You know, we've shield, got... A, and we say shield of believing. Shield of believing. But this whole time, are you having faith with what's going on around you? If you pay attention to what you're watching on TV, what people are saying... You're going to freak out. You're going to drop your shield. Your breastplate's just going to crumple if somebody tries to hit you. And what we want to bring out today, when you've done all to stand, what are we going to do, Denise? Stand. How does that version say that verse? I like this next verse in 16. It says, in every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield, <laughs> for it's able to extinguish the blazing arrows Ooh, that... coming at you from the evil one. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies. Gotta do it so much. And take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of Come God. On. That's very good. What's 13 say in that version? 13, all the way back up where it says... Um, 613. It says you're destined for all things and will rise victorious, but you... Wear the armor that God provides so you're protected as you confront the slanderer. Now, when we talk about when you've done all to stand, stand. When I was in wrestling, my grandson's now in wrestling. My son was in wrestling. One of the greatest things we had to learn was a good stance. Right. Could somebody walk up and push you and you fall over? Or could, did you get strong and make a good stance? If you had a good stance, you couldn't get knocked over e easily. And that's preparing your feet. Go ahead and finish that yeah, scripture. Yeah, well, it says, That's as good. your feet are prepared with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Come on. And that's a major component because most people don't even know what the gospel of peace is. So briefly tell them the gospel of peace, what it is. Well, the gospel of peace, if you look in the, it was prophesied back in the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah by that prophet's, you know, foreshadowing what Jesus was going to come and do but that God has made peace through us through the finished work of Jesus Christ. So if God made his son peace, if Jesus became that peace for the gospel, I have no fear, no dread of what God might do to me because Jesus became my peace yeah, between covenant, him and God. It's a covenant of peace he's made. God's not mad at us. He has made this peace. He took the, the wrath of God was satisfied as Jesus became the sacrifice and became the judgment of God. But most people, especially under religion, were brought up that if I made a mistake, God is angry at me. You know, if you're in Christ, he can't be angry at you again. He took his wrath. He took his punishment out on his son, Jesus. He became that covenant of peace that I now have with God. And, and then when we're prepared with it, we're understanding. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. By knowing what he's done. I love, and we always cross-reference the whole story in Luke 2, the Christmas story, that God sent Jesus yeah. to the planet as a baby. And he, because of that, good news, you know, good tidings. Celebration. Yeah, because of Jesus coming, 
God has made peace with us through his son, Jesus Christ, coming. It became quite a celebration among the angels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they knew what was going on. Come on. They sure did. And they celebrated. So one thing I want to look at, you know, I had a dream the other night. And when I, I saw David, King David, but he was a boy, he was tending sheep. Didn't look like a very ambitious thing that he had going on there. You know, he's just a boy in the South 40 with the sheep. But David had several times where he fought a bear to protect the sheep. He fought a lion, he killed them both, a lion and a bear. So David was hanging out with God. He was doing his job. And preparation. As he, preparation, and as he was doing that, God was preparing him for something greater. And what was amazing is God saw the king in that boy. You know, he looked over all of his brothers. They didn't even call him to the house when the prophet Samuel came to anoint him. He went through all his brothers and said, this isn't it. There, is there any more? Well, David, out the shepherd boy, out taking care of the sheep. You know, God is looking at the heart. He's seeing what you're preparing, what you're doing, how you're going to stand when trouble comes. And what you've been doing up to this point, your faithfulness. I mean, so many people feel destitute right now because of their challenge they face. Yes. Some people have lost their jobs. Hey, I'm claiming that if you're losing your job, then it's a promotion time. Come on. That's so good. So David in 1 Samuel 17, this is the time where he went to take his brother some food. Remember, he'd been preparing with God all this time outside in the woods in, with the flocks, protecting the flocks. And he comes to this place where he's at with his brothers, where they're at war with Goliath and the Philistines. Now, David got to see God do things daily through him. And so that's where his faith was. His brothers got to stand and watch themselves being taunted by a giant on a daily basis, putting them down, putting fear in them. And they got to a place nobody was willing to take on the giant except till David come. And of course, if you're challenged to do what God's called you to do, people are going to try to stop you. They're going to try to make fun of you. So they said, don't get out of there. They even tried to give him the king's armor. And David said, I can't wear this. This, this doesn't fit me. But the whole point that we're trying to make here is that David had been preparing and he filled himself up with God's courage and faith. And if you're standing in this one crowd over here with all these people watching the enemy work every day, watching CNN News, watching the NBC, NSNBC News put out all the scare tactics every night, you're not going to be able to stand when it's time to stand. Mm -hmm. But if you're hanging with God, mm -hmm. if you're building yourself up in your most holy faith, this stuff moving is not going to move you. Well, and, and like this continued on in this passage in Ephesians 6, where we're talking about the whole armor of God. It says in the verse, I think it's 18, pray passionately in the spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. Pray the blessing of God upon all his believers and pray also that God's revelation would be released through me every time I preach the wonderful mystery of, of the hope filled gospel. So Paul was asking for prayer. You know what? Pray for your pastors. Pray for people as they share the gospel. Pray for Dennis as he goes to Zambia next week and shares with leaders there as they're commissioned to go out in all of Africa Come on. with good news. I want to stir those guys up. I'm going to tell them that we've got to stand in this time. This isn't a time to bow down and give in. This is a time to stand and trust God. And if you're going to do that, God is going to take care of you. If you're facing a job being taken away from you because you won't bow your knee. Man, God is going to give you a better position. Mm -hmm. We pray that for you right now. If you're yes. going through a situation where you're being challenged to give in, not faith, but in fear that you're going to rise up with the spirit of faith in this hour and God's going to take care of you and bless you even more in Jesus' name. And and picture this as, as we closed, uh, and I said, read it a minute ago, but faith is your wraparound shield. Get a mental yes. picture of your faith in God, your trust in God being a wraparound yes. shield that extinguishes blazing arrows coming from the evil one. That's good. I hope you're hearing this. Come see us Sunday morning. Uh, be a part of it in faith ministries if you're in the South Kansas City area. Go to uh, capramin.com to follow us. Find it where we're at. Probably as you're watching this, 
uh, I'm going to be in Zambia <laughs> just after this. And so pray for me. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name.